How you guys? Alec over at Modern Pond. Fishing the surf today. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what we were using. Basically this entire pile of fish, redfish and trout, got a five man limit right here. We're a couple redfish short, we're taking a break right now. I just wanted to give you kind of a rundown of what we're doing. Uh, the surf right now is relatively calm. It's probably about one foot surf. As you can see behind me, we're on Padre Island National Seashore. This is a basic gear setup. This is a, a 5,000 sustained Shimano spinning reel on a seven and a half foot falcon rod. It's kind of a medium generic surf rod. And what we're throwing are these uh, rattle traps. There was five of us. We were all throwing basically the same style of lure. Uh, some guys call these rattle traps. Some guys call these lipless crankbaits. But it's all the same idea. It's a, it's a relatively heavy bait. First of all, what that's going to do is going to give you a farther cast. The fact that it's small, it's compact, and it's heavy. The other thing is they make a crap load of noise. I think one of the most important things when you're fishing the surf is to get that attention because there's a lot going on. It's the surf. Uh, you can see this one's been beat up pretty good. That fished all day long, caught several fish. That's the only lure I threw all day. Uh, I'm, I'm running uh, 40 pound fluorocarbon to a quick disconnect uh, swivel in case I need to detach my bait I can do it pretty easily that's a Norton uh, fast attach type of swivel my brother was throwing almost the identical bait with the blue back one of the other guys was throwing almost an identical one that was gold flash it works really really good for the surf um, one of those baits that you can't really run if there's a lot of grass or if there's rocks because what this thing's going to do is going to it's going to dig down pretty deep and it just kind of noses the bottom if you work it the right way uh, stays relatively close to the bottom you can bump it up it'll come sink back down because it is pretty heavy and since it is a, a lipless bait and where the if you can see where that eye is positioned the bait has a tendency to want to run like that works really 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 good uh, we again all those fish that we saw on the floor over there, all of those were basically caught on what we would refer to as a crankbait like this. The other thing that you're going to need if you're going to be in the surf, like we were fishing, some kind of belt. Uh, I got a belt. This is a Mayak uh, branded belt from Everlast. I got a set of pliers because these treble hooks will get caught in your net. So we got a floating net. I connect over here and I have a uh, set of pliers and a place to stick your rod which is basically right here, just a basic, simple rod holder. Um, don't take anything you really like out in the surf, because odds are you know, a good chance you're going to lose some stuff. But anyways, guys, you're out at the beach, probably one of the most versatile surf lures that you can fish right here. Lipless crankbait. Uh, we prefer flashy colors. The flashier, the better. Uh, this one's got a little rosy cheek and a little chartreuse on the back. Half the paint's off of it. But again, take a look at that pile of fish. Go get you some crankbaits. Okay guys, a little recap on the tackle that we were using. Uh, basic two to three foot fluorocarbon leader. Uh, this is Seaguar brand. I like Seaguar, I like Yozuri. I was using 40 pound, this happens to be a, a 30 pound spool. I, I was using 40 pound in the surf. What we were doing is tying whatever your terminal tackle knot is uh, to these things right here. This thing is called a, a Norton uh, quick snap or quick swivel. It's an interesting little figure eight deal that um, uses like some tension and you when you put the lure on there, it just kind of, snaps on what we use these for is when you're at a spot that you don't know it's exactly which lure you want to use it makes changing lures out quick and these have worked really well for us so you kind of like it snaps on it jumps that little thing right there and it, and it works really well it's pretty clean it's short and they're pretty strong i haven't ever had one open up on me or, or fail um, they're it's pretty good little hardware this is the lure. Again, this is a fresh one. I want to show you what one looks like that's not totally all the paint's taken off. Um, rattle trap. That's the actual name. The original rattle trap. That's what we were using. Uh, of the five of us, 
three of us were throwing half ounces. This is a half ounce. And two of, uh, two of the guys were throwing these uh, three quarter ounce ones. These are a little bit This is the three quarter ounce. So about half of us were using one, half of us were using the other. It's a pretty straightforward bait, again guys. It's three quarters of an ounce. You can hear it, you know, it makes a ton of noise. It runs kind of like this. And it rattles back and forth. Um, this broad, flat part of the, of the bait kind of acts like a lipless crankbait nose helps drive the bait down, it, it wiggles and waggles and makes a bunch of noise. Um, this is kind of a specialty bait, guys. I don't. This isn't our all the time go-to bait for fishing. It really only works on a clean, sandy bottom, somewhere like the beach. Um, if you try to throw this in the grass, it's gonna just be a mess. If you're gonna throw it where there's uh, a lot of rock structure, like the jetties or uh, Places like Baffin Bay, where there's all kinds of shell and reef and rock on the on the on the bottom, the sea floor, uh, it's going to get caught all the time. It's going to it's it's not going to work real well for you. In the surf, this thing is a destroyer. Uh, flashy, loud, um, two good size saltwater treble hooks, nice and sharp. Um, I think these are Mustad hooks they put on them. It works really really good. This is Malik Afromanapan. Stay safe.